Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Wednesday, it's April 1st, this will be our chart lesson for today, and I'm probably going to wrap it up a few minutes early, it's probably going to be a little quicker today, uh, the governor's coming on to speak here in my state in the next 15 minutes, and we're being told that they're going to have a mandatory shutdown of our entire state, so I don't know what that's going to mean for it's, it may mean I don't come into the office, but I'll find a way to do most of this from home. So, but uh, I do need to take care of a few things before they shut everything down here today. So I got to get out of here early, unfortunately. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on today's chart lesson. There's a couple of critical things I wanted to, I shouldn't say critical, but there's a couple of things I wanted to go over. And a lot of you liked me showing the second entry. So I circle a few of those. I'll try to show you a few of those real quick, but one of the things I did want to mention to make sure everybody's aware of, I got a, uh, a notice from a couple of my brokers today. Actually, that's another thing I've been meaning to talk about. It's not a bad idea to have more than one brokerage and one account uh, when you start doing this full time and trading live. Just in case something happened with one brokerage or with one set of charts or something, you could always flip over to the other one and try to offset a trade or something or uh, it's just, you know, as I've opened accounts with different brokers, I usually don't close them. I'll take most of my money out, but I'll leave some money in there just in case I needed to make a trade. And I think that's a wise thing to do. So, I, again, I didn't mean to get into that. But anyway, um, they've increased the, the CME has changed their rates again. So you're probably going to see a rate increase on your uh, from your broker on your data. And they just keep going up on that stuff. You would think with them going to all... Maybe that's why they did go up on it because they've pretty much gone to all electronics now and, and maybe they're having to upgrade their system and add more bandwidth. I don't know. But for some reason, they increased those suddenly out of the blue uh, starting uh, April 1st, which would be today. So uh, the other thing I want to talk about, uh, somebody asked me about context. And, you know, you hear me talk about context a lot. And basically... It's, you can't really describe that. That's, that's part of the skill of being able to understand what the chart's telling you. But basically, this is a downtrend. So the overall context today has been down. And But there's a rally here. We, we really kind of went flat here. Um, I put this little uh, channel on here as well. I didn't really use that channel. Somebody else sent me their chart, and they had that on there. And it fits, and it's valid, but it doesn't really help you. Um, in fact, it might hinder you a little bit, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, really, I think your better bet was to trade the sideways channel, but if you saw this upward channel here and you traded that, it's not wrong. Uh, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that channel, but I'll show you in a minute how it might have thrown you off of a couple of trades, or at least one trade here anyway. So, um, but... Basically, the context is just, I mean, there's set, like, like I always tell you, there's second entries all over this chart. But if you find a second entry long and the context of the chart is bearish and it's telling you you need to be looking for shorts, then that second entry long is not going to have any value for you. In fact, if you take it, you might lose. So just make sure you understand the context. And really, if you can find second entries and you can find the trend, well, it's not that hard to find the trend. Um, even if you don't get it exactly right, you pretty much ought to know if, if the market's making lower highs and lower lows like this right here, lower highs and lower lows all the way down, that's a downtrend. That's pretty simple to know, to understand. So you're looking for second entries in there when you're looking for entries. You're really looking for stuff at the key entry point, but second entries is one of the best ones. So... Uh, here we're really working sideways, and somebody asked me about that today. He kept saying, uh, you know, do I need, need to worry about the EMA anymore because prices are, are above it, and a, few, and a few minutes later they're below it, and then they're above it again, and then they're below it again? Well, most of you that have been around a long time, you've heard me say it. What's the sure sign that the market is in a, that is in a range, that it's going sideways? And a sure sign of that, his price is flip-flopping above and below the EMA, 
when you see that consistently like this, that's telling you that this is a sideways market. Even though you can find this a little bit of an uptrend here, this is all, all this is is we were just going from the low side to the high side. And even coming down, there's a channel here, and it just keeps going. And when it did, when it when it finally prices pushed on through here and kept going, and this this was the early channel early on. Here's the highs and here's the lows. Always measure that and look for your measured move based off that. So once we started going lower, you were looking for prices to bounce right in here. And really we bounced. Yeah, there's some stem there. So we bounced almost to the tick right there and went back up to the other side of the and then turned back down again. So when you see prices flip flopping like that above and below the EMA, that's telling you that the market is sideways. You can trade that both ways. Forget about second entries for the most part there. Uh, because especially if it's a tight range, because you'll see second entries and failed second entries and more second entries and more failed second entries, and you'll just get chopped to pieces. Once you get in this range, you got to buy here or sell up here. And there's one long here, and I'll explain that in a minute that I liked. I, actually, I probably wouldn't have taken this trade, but I'm, I, I pointed it out just because it's a second entry, and we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, so... But again, I just circled a few quick, easy to see second entries, and I'll show you each one of those in a minute. But here's something else that's I've gotten a few of these questions lately. You know, people are seeing, they want to know what do you do after a second, let's say like right here, this, you're already in a downtrend here, so you ought to know you're looking for second entries to the downside. But just to give you an idea, here's a new high, it made a new higher high here, and then you get a first entry and a second entry long, and then you get a third entry, and then you finally get a new high there, so it counts over. Somebody says, what do you do but with third entries and fourth entries and fifth entries? Uh, because you can continue to get them. Like here's a new high, there's a first entry, then a second entry right here, and then a third entry right there, and then a fourth entry right here. And then a fifth entry right here. And then finally we get a new swing high because it's higher than that one. So now the count's over again. Well, if you're looking for second entry longs and suddenly you're getting third, fourth, and fifth second in, uh, fifth entry longs, that means the trend's changed. And you need to be swapping to the other side because now you're making lower highs and lower lows. Once you get past that third entry, you've probably got a confirmed trend line and you're looking, so you're, you're going in the other direction. So... I hope that's clear. Uh, I mean, those are the very, very basic, basics of this. And you need to be, you really need to understand that. Um, again, a trend is just, a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows consistently. Just like I just showed you right there. And an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows consistently, like right in here going up. And usually on the downtrend, everything will be below the EMA, as you can see right down through there. And on the uptrend, Eventually, we got everything above the EMA until we switch the other way, and then everything kind of gets below the EMA again. So, um, I hope that's clear. Because those are the very basics, and you need to understand those if you don't want that, if you don't understand anything else we do. So, notice that your measured moves here. I got this one. There's your first move down, and you would measure from right there. And that would give you a target. We didn't reach them. We almost reached this one. I showed you how to do the range, which was very accurate, and we bounced there. We ended up going lower again. But once we made this first leg down, started making the second one, I'd use that for my measured move. And you see, we didn't quite get that one either. And then we had a pretty nice rally there into the close. So um, this was just a weak kind of sideways to downtrend day. It picked up, obviously we went sideways here from really early in the overnight trading to about 10 o'clock, and then it was downhill again after that. But you could still use this range to find you, your first target here on the way down. And then you could, and then once you had this leg in place, when we started the next leg down, then by, you can use that one to look for your next target. And when you come up short like we did here, that's telling you something. 
So once you started rallying here, you had to figure we'd have a pretty good rally because we didn't make this target here. And we did. We had a pretty good rally back. Doesn't look like much at this level, but that's 24.35 or so, all the way up to almost 24.70. So that's a 35 point move right there. It looks small on the big picture here because just so much movement, so much volatility. But just remember on these range days, you know, you want to look for sales up here and buys down here. And uh, if you saw this this channel here, nothing wrong with it. But you probably wouldn't have wanted to go long right here on the second entry where if you saw that we hadn't reached the highs yet and we just came off the lows and you got this two legs right here with a nice setup, you might want to take that second entry. I'd probably skip that regardless. I just marked it because it's easy to spot second entry and I'll show it to you here in a second. I'll back out a little bit. But once you got down here in the lows, notice we had a little failed. We, we failed outside and we're trying to get back in and finally you make a new high and come back and you get a first entry and then you pull back and you get a second entry and that's a very nice bullish bar there get that out of the way so and it actually broke lower and turned and went out the other side somebody asked me about that if you're new to this just wait for your signal bar to close because people start sending me all these ideas where they try to sneak in and they just have losing trades and so if you don't understand what you're you know you need to be working on the basics at this point. You don't need to be trying to find silly ways to sneak in and stuff like that. That's, that's way too advanced for newer people. So uh, for the gentleman that asked me that, um, or anybody else that's thinking that, just wait for your bar to end and make sure it's bullish and then try to go along there. And all you had to do is put a buy stop one tick above that. It took off. You had an easy runner. Very first, One of the very first trades out of the gate at 8.30 this morning and you could have made, uh, you know, 10 or 12 points right there. That simple. And then we're working back down. And what do we, we come back down to the range and notice what happens here. You make a new high right there. You come back. Actually, your new high is right there. You come back first entry and you pull back. And you get a second entry long right off the lows with a nice little small bullish bar. Just put your buy stop. Look how far away we are from the EMA. That's almost a give, give me right there. Put your buy stop above that and boom, off it goes. Another easy trade. Just following the rules, looking for second entries, especially at the key entry points. And on range days, that's at the support level and at the resistance level. And I already showed you this one. It's clear two legs, pretty much measured move. Second entry long. We're a little bit away from the EMA. We aren't quite back to the top. Even if we're going lower here, you would expect it to pull back and test that midline right there at a very minimum, maybe even the EMA at a very minimum, but it just keeps working higher until it gets back to the top. And we had an overshoot down here. You might get an overshoot of about equal distance up here, and that's exactly what happens. Notice that the size of that overshoot, it's almost a... see it's almost an equal distance we actually this one's a little bit further it, it actually we actually broke out lower a little bit further when we went higher so but it's close enough I mean it, you can pretty much see that that's what you might expect to happen and then you, you shoot down you come back you get a first entry and a second entry that's not a perfect signal bar but that's fairly you know Second entry short on a failed breakout, you may take that one. That's one you may filter out because of the signal bar. And there's nothing you can do about that. Your chart may have a good signal bar if it did take it. And that's the thing. Out of all these trades I'm showing you, some of these I'll have a good signal bar, and you may not, but then there'll be a bunch that you'll have a good signal bar, and I may not. So it all works out in the wash. Uh, then, we're, of course, we're moving down. Notice that new low, and then you... you Actually, that's not a second entry right there. I just It just comes back. I actually drew this line off the lows, pulled it up here, and expecting that, hey, if I've got it right here, and there's a good chance I do. I've done this forever. I know, I, you know I, I, I'm pretty good at spotting these. And you can learn to do this too. And so I just drag it up to the high. And if I get a setup right here, I'm probably going to take it. And notice that big bearish bar right there at the key entry point. 
And even though there's not really a second entry here, notice that you move up, have a little correction, and then move up again, and then turn down. So there, there really is a two-legged move in there. If you went to a slightly smaller chart, you'd have a second entry right there. I know that's going to confuse a lot of brand new people. Just for, don't even think about it. What I talked about, there's no second entry there on your chart, so forget about it because it's going to confuse you is what it's really going to do. So, um, but just for the, just to explain it to you real quickly, the gist of it is, is that price action works at every level. So if you open up a thousand tick chart, there's probably a clear second entry there. And that's what I mean by at a lower level. It's not on this level. And if you're not skilled at this, you, you don't want to take any trade that you don't see on this level. So if you're new to this, forget I even told you that for now. Uh, and I don't, and I don't mean to sound frustrated, but we've got so many new people. And, uh, you know, I talked about it yesterday that it seems like, you know, there's a lot of people stuck at home and starting to, you know, they're looking for, a, they're, un, they're losing their job. They may be employed. They're looking for ways to make money. And I got four or five emails saying, you know, you were right on. That's exactly why I showed up here in the last few weeks. Um, I lost my job. I can't go back to work. I need to make some extra money. My wife's out of, lost her job too. And, you know, we need to make money. And that's why I'm doing this. And so uh, trading is really boomed here uh, just because of the situation. And, you know, now they're shutting my state down. And so we're probably going to have a lot more people in my state looking for work and looking for things to do. And they may come in here and want to start trying to trade. So I think this is going to continue to grow in popularity just because of the economic situation due to this virus and everything being shut down and people just needing work and needing to make a living. And so I get it, but uh, there's actually another little second entry right here. Notice that low first entry and then it corrected again and it shot down all in one bar. So it's still a second entry. And so there's your another nice second entry. Go short right there and boom, there's another nice move. And there's probably some more in here. Uh, here's another one. Notice that new low. Actually, yeah, it did break lower right there, first entry, and then it comes up here, and there's a second entry. It's not a great signal bar, um, but it's still a second entry short. It would have worked. Here's another one. You made a new swing low right there. It's lower than that one, so your count's zero. First entry, again, not a very good signal bar, but there's a second entry short right there. Another good trade. Here's another, uh, actually, no, it's not a second entry trigger right here. There's one right there, and it would have been off that resistance, and there's enough room to scalp out. Even though you really your channel's up now, you'd really be looking for second entry longs here. Uh, and here's one right here. This is not a perfect second entry long because that's an inside bar, but it still makes a lower high. Notice that new high? Pull back first entry. And then you make another lower high. So if it breaks higher there, it's really a second entry. You prefer to see this one make a lower, you prefer to see a lower low in there too to make it an ideal second entry. But technically that's still a second entry and there's another easy trade. And if you, and even if you didn't want to count that one, well, actually, no, we made a new high there. So never mind. I'm just looking to see if I see any more. That's technically you could call that a second entry because that's a double, double bottom. So that's basically a new low. So first entry and second entry right there. And that's a nice bearish bar and look at it go. So these things are all over the place. Just make sure you're looking at them in the right context, meaning, you know, the market's saying the prices are saying we're going lower. And when you're in a channel, here's your context here. Any, every time you bounce off this one, you come back to here, you expect it to bounce higher. And every time you bounces off, comes back up to here, you expect it to bounce off and go lower. They're like magnets. They pull to it and then they repel it when it gets there. And that's, that's, I tried to explain that the other day to help people with these, with their trend channels. Look how tight that is and look how it fits inside all the closes. You know, people send me their thing and they'll have it like this and this. And yeah, you probably got it right, but you can't tell much by that. Or they'll, or they'll have it like this. Well, 
I didn't really want to get into all this, but you know, they'll have it like that. And then this one like that. And you can see that kind of fits too, but it's right the way I showed it to you. Because notice here, prices aren't coming back to the trend line and, and about turning down every time, and they're not turning down off this one every time. So it tells you it's not right. Prices should fit neatly, and they should turn off those lines every time. That's the way it should look. And then you got the same thing down here. Every time prices touch either one of those lines, they turn. Here they keep kind of crawling up it, but notice how they can't get through until they finally turn down. And that's just because the market was a little strong right there. Come back up, and then you get a little overshoot. And that's what will happen a lot of times. You won't get a trend if you get an overshoot. You may not get a break and a new high. You just reverse. And that's what happened here. You reverse, and you go the other way. And this is my measured move error. That's not a trend line. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. I don't have time for any more today. Like I said, I've got to get out of here. I need to run a few errands before they shut everything down here. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that maybe he's going to decide not to shut everything down, but uh, I'm hearing from somebody that knows that that's probably what we're about to be told. So uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, again, I don't know if they do shut things down here it may take me a day or so to get everything going at home and so forth. I've got a laptop and I can do this from home, but it could, you know, it could take me a day or so to really get set up at home to do this if I'm not allowed to leave the house anymore. So, uh, yeah, I may, I may, you may not hear from me on regular time periods tomorrow or something if that happens. I'll try to you know, post something to the site, just letting you know what's going on. Uh, but it may take me a day to get prepared for this. I probably should have already been prepared for it, but I didn't really think we would get to that this quickly uh, here because this is, you know, our population is pretty small here. And But um, somebody told me in our little small area here, we got 16 people on a ventilator in our hospital. So um, I didn't realize it was that bad here. You wouldn't know it by riding around town because people are out and everywhere. So, but I think that's why the governor's going to shut it down. So, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Hopefully, you'll hear from me tomorrow. But definitely, definitely, you'll hear from me tomorrow at some point, explaining what's going on or how we're going to do this going forward. But uh, again, it may take me a day or so just to get just to get set up and get organized and where I can do this properly from home. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it uh, soon. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.